Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me. If you do enjoy my videos, please share, subscribe, please like, comment down below if you want anything to add. So yeah, let's get down to it. So I'm going to be doing a preview of some of the teams, where I think uh, our biggest challenges, what I think the strengths of the opposing teams are in the autumn, are coming up, upcoming Autumn Internationals. So yeah, let's, uh, first let's dive into some of the things from our team. Okay, so firstly, obviously the first game against England is out of the international window, which means that we can't have, uh, well, Faf is out regardless of the rest of the season, uh, rest of the year, so he's not playing any of them, so we've got to discuss that. But Villarou and... Um, Francois Lowe's and the, and and obviously Dwight Vermeer and all of them are not playing in the in the year in tour. So that, that that is sad, but I think it actually is um, a great opportunity to try out some new things. We already played England a couple of times, so so I think the perfect almost excuse to get some of our players into that position. So first, let's talk about Fuff. Fuff has got a couple of great contenders. I think we do have a. Um, I do feel that unfortunately, Fuff is almost. Leap, jumped leaps and bounds ahead of other scrum options in South Africa at the moment, and that causes major worry when it comes to how, who backs him up, who who comes up. So obviously, after questioning a couple of friends, or going online, asking some of the people online, I, I I came up with a couple of options and people's opinions. We've obviously got uh, Kubus Reinach who plays overseas in the Sales Sharks. We've got locally here, we've got the uh, we've got. Embrus Papir, who's been on the bench for most of the rugby championship, and Cross Crenia. I think he's injured, but he might be ready. It's, it's up in the air on that, so we'll see how that goes. And yeah, so I mean, there's a couple of good options. In my opinion, I would like to obviously see uh, Ross Crenia. I think he's probably the best local player. Kobus Reynach can't play the first game anyway, but not a bad idea to maybe bring him in other games as he is a stunning player. He's played very well over the season, actually might be a very, a very useful Addition to the team as he understands the 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 the, the northern play. He, he's he's been playing for a while there. I think he he will be a, he'll be very useful in the replacement of Fab. So I'd like to see him be brought from um, from England definitely. Um, but if we have to, if we definitely play local, I'd probably say uh, Ross Cooney a top choice. Embrus Papier has done well. He's played well here and there. Although it is sad he's not even even getting time in the Curry Cup with Ivan van Sale mostly playing for the Bulls in the Curry Cup. So he hasn't had a lot of game time. I question that. I'd like to see him play, but there's obviously something that uh, Rossi sees in him. So I think it'll be good to give him a chance to blood him, especially against England, as we have played him already. It's now just about that. So I think that'd be cool. On Vili's position, um, I think the two top players, in my opinion, and I mean, there's going to be a lot of question marks. Well. But my, my top two players for this is either uh, Damien Willemser or Warwick Gelant. Gelant, I think, has had a great year. I know he had a little bit of an injury, but he's coming back up quite quickly for it. So I think he should be fine for the game. And I'd love to see those two players uh, fight it out for that position. You know, Francois Lowe, there's a couple of great options there. So I'm not too worried. Um, and I think we'll be fine there. Okay, so let's... On... On the whole thing, I think this this national this Northern Hemisphere tour is really going to be a challenge for, for example, Ireland to prove that they can take New Zealand, us to prove that we are moving in the right direction, Australia to prove that they're still one of the best teams in the world, and Southern Hemisphere to prove that it is, because everybody questions always now the questions, you hear the questions all line up, saying that Northern Hemisphere has compete, is now taking over Southern Hemisphere rugby. Now, I never want to say, obviously, I think Northern Hemisphere rugby is great, I think Southern Hemisphere is great, but I don't think yet Northern Hemisphere scored up to Southern Hemisphere rugby. And this is a chance for them to prove it. And if Northern Hemisphere has, chance for Northern Hemisphere to prove it down. But let's face it, look at the tour. Besides Australia, everybody else from the north when they came in the middle of the year were clobbered. So I think there's going to be a little bit of... I, I still think there's a ways to go for the Northern Hemisphere. Their style of play is very different. But what is very interesting and what makes this, these tournaments, this, this games very, very essential is what it's going to start bringing up in the question of the war of the qualification rounds next year World Cup. Thanks to the fact that South Africa had a poor couple of years, we're in the same group as New Zealand, which is never a great thing, but at the same time also gives us the opportunity to, to do it out the gate, and we won't meet them until the final anyway. But that means also the team who loses in that game effectively, most likely, will face Ireland in the quarterfinals, which, let's face it, at this point is almost like facing New Zealand. So that is a tough one, and I'd love to see how these games go to actually play that and see how that actually affects everything. So yeah, let's see how... It all plays together, what it all's going to happen. But yeah, let's cover the teams. So England's first game. England, the first game. First things first there, I think it's it's a vengeance game for England. Eddie Jones has been in turmoil. He's obviously changed now. He's brought in a new uh, Ed, John Mitchell from the Bulls. Thank you for causing problems down here. But yes, he has. Uh, to help him out there, I think he it, it, John Mitchell has a great tactic and he's done a lot for the Bulls this year. So that that's going to change their game plan a lot. But England's strategy... It's almost been, I don't know, confusing. They they started the year um, 
Well, I think they've, con they've continued the year with this, with the effectively strategy of just barging over, barging over. But as their pack seems to have, their forward pack has, seems to weaken and they're not as strong as they used to be and they can't play the full 80, they're having a hard time actually keeping that dominance because that was their power for the last few years. It was a case of they would just rumble over the scrum, get, uh, and without having, they don't need to have the collectors because they've got so much force on their front uh, in their pack that they actually just push over the ball. They don't need the collectors because they don't actually have a lot of great fetches in their team and they still don't, from what I can see. So I think that. That's going to be very interesting to see if they actually have sorted out that problem and actually how that's going to affect the whole thing. They came fifth in Six Nations this year. South Africa already beat them twice. Fine, they won the last game, but I don't think South Africa really turned up for it. It's sad to see. I would love to see more consistency in South Africa. There's no point in if you win, a, win two games to then just throw caution to the wind. It's going to be like New Zealand, consistency, consistency, consistency. They've bought... They have a couple of players they can't play. They have 12 injuries or suspensions that they cannot select from with their, their regular guys. And eight new players are, are uh, newbies are in their top 36 team. So that's going to be interesting to see. There's a couple of players who can't be there. We've got uh, Chris Robshaw. We've got Nathan Hughes. Both great players who are going to be missed in the tournament. But a couple of uh, stars, I think, coming from the English players. And I think it's trying to show that they can bring the youth and the quality in that. So I think it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think if South Africa beats them up front again and just holds off, especially until about the second half, that's where it's going to count. And you see, uh, uh, England have had a hard time trying to keep a lead or keep the game for most of the time. I think they've got a conditioning problem. And also, um, they, they seem to not be gelling well. They've got a couple of great star players individually, but the team isn't gelling well. I think the team culture is broken at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. Next, France. France is a... Coin toss. They've always been, it's one of the consistencies in rugby for many years, and it still is, that for some odd reason, they, you never know what team's going to pitch up. They fired their defensive coach at the beginning of the year, then they fired their attacking coach, then even after the defense was getting better and their attack was actually quite good against France and they, against New Zealand, then they fired the New Zealand, uh, the, the attacking coach after New Zealand. So I don't know what's going on in that camp. That camp is confusing, and I have to admit, they are, there's a lot of up in the air about that. So it's very hard to predict because a lot of changes in their leadership, almost as much as, I don't think, I think when they were told you've got to rotate the players, I think the coach heard the coaches too. They've got to rotate the coaches. I don't know, maybe he heard that. I'm not sure what's going on there, but he he's obviously confused us all and has decided to make sure that nobody knows what they're going to go into these games. But there are some uh, bright lights in France. I think that they still are a stunning team. In the front, even though they had a hard time against New Zealand, there was a beautiful attacking, although the defense on the other hand fell apart. Weirdly enough, something that was very strong in the Six Nations. They were the highest... Um, I think as far as I know, the highest tackling, tackling percentage team in the, in the Six Nations, best uh, ability to keep the ball, and they lost it in the, in, against New Zealand. So I'm not sure if that's the quality of New Zealand coming through, or if it's just that they are changing their strategies all the whole time. But yeah, we've got Denver Bumba coming from uh, under-20 championships, where they had a great under-20 championship season, and it's showing the quality of uh, the French players coming through in, that, in their ranks. So... That is going to be exciting for them to see. Bamba was a great uh, player in the, in the championships, a beast of a man. So it'll be good to see him come through. Um, I think yeah, they finished fourth in the in the Six Nations, but it's a different team from the Six Nations that played in in New Zealand, and I think it's a different team now because they fired their attacking coach. So unpredictable. The biggest thing from uh, what I'd say is just if you look at the the whole the, the strategy of the France, they really like to play on the wings from the lot from, against New Zealand. They love to to a pretty much flood the wings with players. So it'll be, I think New Zealand, South Africa really need to worry about that because we have actually got a tendency to drift inwards. We like to play in the centre of the field until we're going up. But defensively, we do not, def uh, we not, we defend the ends, the middle of the field, not really past the five metre line. Something where France likes to attack. So I think South Africa is going to have to alter their strategy a little there. And we've got some guys like Dianti and Colby, whoever comes in, maybe Pimpi and all of them really need to make sure that they cover those wing positions and the flanks are, f are fully back because they really, that's what France likes to do. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I think it's going to be that's going to be a very interesting game, unpredictable. We'll have to see how the first games for France goes before we can get there. Okay, so next Scotland. Um, they have an amazing attack. I think they're probably the most southern team of all of the uh, of the northern teams. Now, what I say about that is they they play very loose ball. Um, something that most northern teams are very tactical. They're very slow. Uh, not not slow in speed, but slow in the way that they feed the ball. It's very, very like focused and tactical. Where Scotland has got much more of a, uh, they 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 will vary their play a lot. It's exceptionally fast-paced ball off the ruck, and something that really helped them this year get to third in the uh, 
championships in the Six Nations. So I think they are they're a danger, and probably, in my opinion, probably one of the, the, the most dangerous games of the, the tournament. As something South Africa has at a hard time is the fast ball attack. Uh, we've we've counted well against it in um, New Zealand when we played New Zealand last and the previous New Zealand. But I think the after actually seeing Scotland actually has a a bit of a faster. Uh, movement of that ruck. They, they, it's less strategic, less strategic, and I think a little bit less uh, calculated in New Zealand. But it is exceptionally fast. So we are definitely have to counter that. Um, Scotland definitely. They're probably their biggest thing is also ball retention. In the Six Nations, they kept the ball through a very very long phases. They were very patient. So it's all about keeping patient as the defensive side and not losing focus. Something that we did show in the previous tournament. So I think it'll be. I think we'll be fine in that. But definitely something we need to be wary of. Wales is a is a comeback game. Uh, the second string teams played in the USA earlier in the year in a little bit of a dead rubber, but New us Wales con very convincingly and powerfully came back at the end of the match, and I give them credit for that. Well done. Um, they really showed quality and they've showed the depth of their team, something that really helped them, I think, rise to second in the rugby championship. They've always been focused. They've always focused heavily on conditioning. They're definitely one of the best, uh, one of one of the fittest, probably behind New Zealand uh, teams in the in world rugby, and they have an amazing. Um, I'd say a very, very strong and uh, confident forward pack. So it'll be interesting to see if, they, if their backline turns up, they're a dangerous pack to worry about, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, guys, thank you very much if for uh, joining me in my coverage of like previews of the game. I will be bringing out previews per game, focusing on the team selections and stuff, so please look forward to those. But yeah, thanks, guys. Enjoy, and we'll chat soon. Cheers.